critics are saying that the comment tree is a portal to friendship. That's what critics are saying right now. Who are these critics? Is, I can't remember. It's either Rolling Stone or M Delta 2000. I get them mixed up sometimes. But let's go ahead and see what's new today. Let's take a look here. All right. So actually, this is a comment on my most popular video by far. Uh, it's how to know if your hairline is receding. Now, granted, I made that about a year and a half ago. If I had to do it over again, it would say different things. But um, this is what the comment said. And this is from our friend, I guess it's pronounced Kendall Bird. Uh, he says, quote, I'm Native American. And genetics wise, it's pretty rare to have a receding hairline at an early age. But I'm going to be 24 real soon. And I brush my hair with a comb and hairs come out easier than usual. I'm going to lose my sanity. Ha ha ha. End quote. So that's our friend Kendall. Thank you uh, for, for watching and, and sharing that with us today. I'm here to help. I'm here to address this uh, based on my uh, observation of the world and how this all works. And I think this is such a great comment and it helps me explore my understanding of hair loss a little bit better. You know, we would love to, to think that we know what causes hair loss so that we could ultimately prevent that and then fix the problem and then, you know, we're all hair loss free. But I think, Kendall, I think you're onto something here. Now, it's pretty much common knowledge to all of us, isn't it, that people of Asian descent are less likely to lose their hair just as they're less likely to be able to grow a full beard. Wouldn't, wouldn't we all agree about that? And wouldn't we also agree that Native Americans ultimately share that same Asian blood? You know, the uh, Native Americans originally they migrated across from Asia, Bering Strait, Alaska, settled down America, whether it was North America, Central America, South America, ultimately that what that's what makes up the natives. And whether it's Native American or whether it's the, uh, the the natives that ended up breeding with the Spanish when they came over, creating modern day Mexicans or whatever however you want to word it, ultimately they came from Asia. Native Americans ultimately Asian descent. Wouldn't we all agree on that? I, th I think we would. I think to me, I think that's common knowledge, right? So, with that being said, yeah, I I get it. I, you're right, uh, Kendall. That if you're of Native American descent, it shouldn't make sense that you would that you would lose your hair this early and, and, and see that happen already. My theory is, because and I don't know your full heritage here. My guess is that you're not full, 100% full Native American Indian. My guess is. You're a quarter or you're half or you're three quarters. My guess is you've got some foreign blood in you, some blood that's not Native American. And if I had to guess, that foreign blood would be either of European descent of, or of some kind of Middle Eastern descent, most likely European if you're talking to me from America. But and the reason I say that is uh, what I have observed is that people of European descent, people of... Middle Eastern descent, and I want to be specific, okay? People of like Europe, like Scotland, right? We're picturing a lumberjack right now with his beard, and he may not have hair, but who cares because he's got the beard. We can picture right now someone from like a Muslim country like uh, Iran or Iraq. Beard, right? Hair optional, but we've got the beard. We can even picture someone who's Jewish right now. Maybe they have hair, maybe they don't, but I can easily picture a beard. We, we think of those things. But where there's a beard, there may not be the hair. Not always. There's always exceptions to the rule. But I'm just saying there's, there's a pattern there, right? So with that being said, I think, Kendall, somewhere in your family line, there is one of those li uh, family lines that has that gene in it. So maybe your great-great-great-grandfather was half English. If not more. Maybe you're saying, well, Nick, actually, I'm only a quarter. I'm only a half. Even more so, that would make sense. Now, the reason I'm saying this today is because I made a video about a month ago where I interviewed my uncle, who's 60 years old, completely full head of hair, perfect hairline. I see no thinning. And I prove that because for me, and I, and I, I tell you all this from personal experience, in case you're new to my channel, my mother is half Mexican and half Italian. Now, Italian will deem as European. You know, you may lose your hair, but you can grow the beard. But my, but my mother's Mexican, or half Mexican, and so uh, with, with, see, and this is my theory going back to the Asian thing. 
what are Mexicans? Well, they're ultimately a half-breed from the original people that came across from Asia and then the Spanish and Europeans mixed, and then there's your half-breed, the, the Mexicans, right? So a quarter of me is that. Well, those uncles, all, all three of my uncles on that side, full heads of hair on that side. So to me, that backs up the theory that I had, I was in the running to not lose my hair at all. If I were like my uncles, I would be, I could be 60 and have a full head of hair, right? But instead, I ultimately inherited that hair gene from my dad's side of the family, which is a European mix and nothing but that. That's all they are is just a European mix, not even Native American or anything, right? So to me, it's very obvious. If you want to know if you're going to lose your hair, though, uh, uh, know what I want to say to you in closing is that's my theory. My theory is that you've got non-Native American blood in you because the, non, the Native American, to me, I generically deem that as Asian, which should have given you a free pass. So why isn't your pass working? European blood or some other non-Asian blood in you. That's my guess. That's my theory. I want to close with this, though, and I'm going to be promoting this heavily this year. Also, a month ago, I interviewed my mom, like on the same day as I interviewed my uncle. And we looked at my, my one-year-old picture from when I was you know, a baby. We looked and we saw that my hairline at one year old is very comparable to my hairline now. So what I want to propose to you, Kendall, is that you go back, you find a photo from when you were one year old. And I want you to imagine yourself as a 35 year old man with that hairline. Now, so far my, my theory checks out. Everyone who's done this agrees that it's is adding up. If you look at your one year old picture and you're bald, then that's you at 35. If you're looking at your picture when you're old and you look like this, you look like this at 35. Or if you had a perfectly full head of hair, perfect hairline at age one, that's how you're going to be when you're 35. That's my theory. So far it backs up. Yeah, I believe that there's, there's definitely a connection between going bald and your, how easy it is to grow a, a beard. Yeah. But more so, it's about predicting your hair loss through that one-year-old picture. So I hope that helps. No one in the world will give you an answer like I just did. I know that's some weird stuff. But based on theories that I have seen, this is what I am led to believe. And I thank you for leaving that comment. Thank you for uh, coming to my channel here. You are welcome here. I'm so glad to have you. And just remember, if you're tempted to subscribe to this channel, don't because you will be disappointed. I will make videos that you are not interested in and then you'll just lose interest and then you won't you won't so don't subscribe just whatever you do don't subscribe and thanks for watching but don't subscribe